In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a control chart that allows the user to specify the upper and lower control limits for the chart. Control charts are used to monitor the stability and control of measurements over a period of time. There's four basic elements to an effective control chart. First off, it has to be a time series graph. Second, the mean of all measurements is shown in the graph as a reference line. Third, you establish upper and lower control limits that are placed a specified number of standard deviations from the mean, and then indicators to show which measures are out of control. Typically, any measurements that are more than three standard deviations from the mean are considered unlikely and therefore outside of the control limits. However, it's also common to consider measurements that are more than one or two standard deviations from the mean as a form of analysis. In the example you see here on the screen, I'm showing which months are outside of one standard, devi standard deviation from the mean. The user can then control the view to increase that to two standard deviations, and now we only see one month that's out of the control limits. And if we go to three standard deviations, we can see that all of the months are within the expected control limits. So how do we build this graph? First, let's go ahead and drag order date to the columns and pick continuous months. I'm going to drag sales to the rows, and we have our line chart. From here, I'm going to drag on an average line onto the table. I'm going to format that reference line so that it's a thin line in black, but you can customize it any way you like. And on this line, I'm going to go ahead and on the label, I'm going to choose custom and I'm going to say the average and plus the value. So now we need to establish our upper and lower control limits, but we want the user to be able to pick the number of standard deviations. So let's start by building a parameter. Choose create parameter and I'm going to call this number of standard deviations. I want the user to, to pick between 1 and 3, so I'm going to set it as an integer data type with a range that goes from a minimum of 1 to a maximum of 3 with a step size of 1. And I'm going to show that parameter. Now that we have the average line, we want to go ahead and create two calculated fields to show the upper and lower control limits. So let's create a calculated field. I'm going to call this one the upper control limit. And I'm, what I need to do is I need to compare the average reference line to a certain number of standard deviations from that average line. So my reference line is the window average of the sum of sales. And then I'm going to add to that the window standard deviation of the sum of sales times the number of standard deviations. So that's going to be times my parameter. And hit OK. And then we can duplicate that field, edit the copy, and this one is going to be our lower control limit. But instead of having it as a plus, it's going to be a minus. So we're taking the average line and we're subtracting off a certain number of standard deviations from the average line. Let's put both of those fields onto the detail shelf. Now that we have those on there, we can add on a reference band. I want to add the reference band on for sum of sales for the entire table. My, my minimum value is going to be my lower control limit. My upper value is going to be my upper control limit. I'm going to change the label to be a custom. And I'm going to say lower control or lower limit. And I'm going to insert the value. And in my maximum, 
I'm going to also change it to a custom label and name it upper limit with the value. I want to make sure I can see the upper and lower limits, so I'm going to set a make it a dashed line. And then with the fill, I'm just going to use maybe a light gray and hit OK. So now we can see where the upper and lower control limits are. And as I move my standard deviations or change the number of standard deviations, you can see how the reference lines and the reference band moves. So what I want to do now is I wanted to, to be able to create indicators for those measures that are out of the control limits. So for example, these fields up here are all out of the upper control limit. So I want to put an indicator for those fields. To do that, I'm going to create another calculated field. And I'm going to call this one outside control limits. Okay, and I want to say uh, if the sum of sales is greater than the upper control limit or the sum of sales is less than the lower control limit, then I want to return the sum of sales. Otherwise, I don't want to return anything, so I'm just going to include an end. Hit OK. And I'm going to put that field onto my row shelf. I'm going to change the mark type to a circle. And on my sum of sales shelf, I'm going to change the mark type to a line. If I make this a dual axis and synchronize, you can now see I've highlighted the marks that are outside of the control limits. All I need to do now is make a couple of changes to my view. So I'm going to maybe set the sales to maybe a light color and my control limits maybe to a red to alert us that they're outside the control limits. If I increase this number of standard deviations to two, you can see that I have only now have one mark that's outside the control limit. And if I increase it to three, I don't have any. So that's all there is to it. You should now be able to create a control chart that allows the user to specify the upper and lower control limits for the chart.